You are watching With a Cup of Tea, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings. Now, here's our show. Okay, well, I'm, um, I'm here today with Keith McCafferty, and you have a new book, uh, A Death in Eden, and it's part of a series, the Sean Stranahan Mystery Series. Right. right. That's my uh, seventh book, I think. The seventh book? Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we start um, just asking a little bit about you. Uh, what's your background for this? Well, I grew up in, uh, in Appalachia, in southeast Ohio. Oh. My father told me once that uh, he'd do anything he could for me as long as I got out of there. So oh. I got out of the coal mill and uh, the, the, the coal mines and the steel mills. I used to work at a steel mill. And uh, it's a long road from there to here. But uh, I grew up enthralled by fishing and reading Al McLean's uh, stories. He was the editor of Field and Stream magazine. Mm -hmm. And my goal in life was to meet and impress the great Al McLean and marry his daughter, who was a beautiful young woman, and uh, take his job at Field and Stream. Perfect. And uh, I decided I, I, could, I could impress him by learning how to cast a 100-foot fly line without a rod, just with my hands, because he could do that. And uh, we were actually supposed to meet at a cabin on the Madison River because I was an up-and-coming writer for Field and Stream, and he was the editor emeritus. And he died. And so the short story is I, I, I never uh, met his daughter, I never married his daughter, I never took his job, and I never met my hero. But I came close to taking his job. I ended up writing you know, more than a thousand articles for Field and Stream. Goodness. So your your books typically involve uh, some fishing? Well, uh, a small amount of fishing. I have to be aware that 80% or so of my readers are women who don't fish. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife says, don't tell people this because it kills the magic, the idea of magic. But uh, they actually have discussions at Penguin Books about, uh, you know, do I have a, one fishing scene too many or one fishing scene too little? The truth is now I'm a, I can get around, get away with a couple small fishing scenes in, per book, ah, okay. especially if I can weave it into the plot. Always a mystery, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, so far they're, these are mystery books as opposed to suspense or thrillers, mm -hmm. which basically means I withhold something and there's a, a crime usually to, to solve. The other difference is, is if, as they say, what's the difference between mystery and a thriller? $200,000, that's what the difference is. Oh, yeah. Because of the, the, the big thriller books, even though they're shoddily written quite often, those are the ones that make the big bucks. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but I've never written with respect to how much money, you know, how, 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 you know, where it will be fit by genre, or how much money you make. Okay, so anyway, back to you. You <laughs> came out of uh, background in, in southeastern Ohio? Yeah, in Appalachia. Okay, uh, in Appalachia. Foothills are the Alleghenies. Okay. Obviously uh, went on and uh, became a writer. I became an editor. Well, uh, I'm still technically the survival and outdoor skills editor of Field and Stream. Oh. But I'd written so many articles for Field and Stream that I started to write the novels as sort of an antidote, sort of a you know, sort of uh, a hobby almost. And I wanted to surround myself with characters that I'd like to hang around with. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's also a good idea if you're writing a series and you're going to be with those characters for a few bucks, you better like them. <laughs> but I didn't, wasn't thinking that far down the road at the time. Yeah. Okay. So um, who do you think would like this book? Who, should, who would be interested to buy it? Well... General, you know, mystery readers, certainly, is generally shelved in mystery fiction. Mm -hmm. And also people who have a history uh, of this area, you know, whether they used to live here in Wyoming or Montana, um, or are simply interested in, like, vicariously visiting those areas. One reason they took me at, um, at Penguin Books was because uh, Catherine Court, the publisher, could see uh, a number of different ways to market the books, whether it's general fiction, as like uh, literary fiction or mystery fiction or uh, regional. 
you know, mm -hmm. and uh, or sporting oriented or even f fishing. And I didn't do I didn't write the books with that design, but that way they can market them to more different groups. Okay. But as a general rule, I you know my books are sold to men and women, you know, usually in their 40s and 50s. Um, because that's what that's you know we have an older reading public so I always you know I always I'm glad when I get a young one you know <laughs> Some, yeah. somebody under the age of thirty <laughs> and I get a few of them so okay. that's good <laughs> okay so any of those groups would be good any group yeah yep a death in Eden a death in Eden well, and that's it's called Eden because that's that's the 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 famous float that people take in the Smith River ends at oh. Eden Bridge oh so. And it was a short, the short hop from there to make putting it in the title, yeah. Well, thanks very much. Well, thank you very much, Mark. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. This has been a production of This House of Books. If you'd like to be a part of the cooperative, please visit thishouseofbooks.com slash get involved.